What's up guys, it's Jay back again with Tech Everything. Today we're going to take a look at a drive from Intel that looks to give you NVMe performance in the M.2 form factor for really cheap, the Intel 600P. Taking a look at the specs, you'll see that the 600P uses 3D TLC NAND and a silicon motion controller. The drive features Intel's now standard tie-dye looking box color scheme. Internally you'll just find the manual and the drive. The drive's pretty basic. It has its controller as well as the die. No heat spreader. Around back you'll just see the Intel and NVMe logo. When measuring the performance of the 600P, you really should compare it more to high-end SATA SSDs than you should to high-end NVMe M.2 SSDs. So the 960 Pros, the 950 Evos, those kind of drives are going to murder it in pretty much every test. But if you compare it to drives like the A50 Evo or standard SSDs, you will see that the results and price are much more comparable. The 960 Evo is going to be sometimes 50 to even 60, even $70 more than the 600P if you're looking at the 256 gigabyte version. So you really want to compare it against drives in its price range, which are standard SATA drives. And in that case, it does very well. Let's take a look at the benchmarks. On to benchmarks. First up, we have the Passmark Disk Mark Suite. So I was able to get a 1462 for a sequential read, which is a really good score right around where you would expect, as well as a 509 for write. The random read of 444 is not that great, more on that later. With an overall score of 8736, that places this drive in the 99th percentile on Passmark, but where does it fall in terms of actual performance? If you take a quick look over at the Passmark disk rating sheet, you will see that the 960 EVO and 950 Pros, they range from around 13,000 to 17,000 in score, while the 850s, the Pro and EVO, range from around 4,300 to 4,700. So that would put the 600P right in the middle of those. Sliding over to Crystal Diskmark, I compared the 600P to a Samsung 850 EVO. And as you see from the chart, the read speeds are not even close. The 600P is about three times as fast. The writes are comparable. Uh, the 4K speeds are also comparable. That's where you will see the 600P struggle a little bit in terms of 4K reads. So if you're really hammering this drive, say you're doing a lot of photo or video editing, something like that, or reopening a lot of small files uh, very fast, this drive may struggle. It's not the best for 4K reads. The drive felt snappy as a boot drive, loading up programs really fast. I didn't have any issues or notice any slowdowns coming from an 850 EVO SATA version, and it booted Windows fairly quickly in 9.53 seconds. So overall, I was really impressed with the 600P. It gave quality performance. It's not gonna to be to the level of a 950 Pro or a 960 Evo even in the N.2 form factor, but it is a good drive if you're looking to have a boot drive. I think it would be great for a gamer. Uh, the read speeds were really good. The write speeds were about what you would expect from a SATA drive, a good SATA drive, but this really isn't marketed towards top high-end performance. It's really, you gotta compare it to a standard SSD like an 850 EVO because that's the level of write performance you, you will get. Plus, you'll get a kick in the pants when it comes to reading performance. I picked this guy up for $79.99 from Micro Center. Now, I've seen it on Amazon for around 85, 87 bucks. At that price, it is still a steal. If you're looking for the top end ultra drive, I would go for 950 EVO or 960, but in the budget market, you really can't beat this guy. It's, super cheap and there are also a 500 gigabyte version as well as a one terabyte version so you can look for them i'll drop links below if you want to check them out also you can check out the written review on the website i'll drop a link below for that as well thanks for watching as always i'm jay please like comment and subscribe i'll see you next time